Good morning, Cameron. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Dude, I got to tell you, I love your energy on this show. Your energy is spot on. It keeps us glued to it. And more importantly, the way that you have paced yourself out allows me as the viewer to physically get involved in the game. I don't normally watch myself, but I've been watching this game because it's so much fun. So it's aired for the for a week, and I'm here at the, uh, you know at my house in my sofa watching a game, <laughs> which I'm on, which I host, and I'm like all in, and I'm cheering and feeling the pain, and I'm like oh, and I had somebody right beside me go like, dude, you're in the show, like you're right there. <laughs> why, why are you watching it like a fan? And and for you know for me, it's one of the things I like about it is it has that aspect. It just draws you in regardless of like whether you're hosting it or not. And I, I, I really enjoyed watching it. And like, sort of like you're alluding to, I really had a great time hosting it. Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about we creatives, Cameron, is the fact that we step out of our normal selves to go do what it is that we do through creativity. And then when we come back, I have no idea what I did. I just know I showed up. Uh, that's so true. It's like people will be like, I don't get it. Why don't you know whether they make it or crush it? I have, I have no memory. You know, we obviously we shoot a lot of these shows and you're in it and you're focused and you're locked in, but then you got to forget that and move on to the next one. And then you go to the next show and the next three contestants and the next three names and you find out how they know each other and new trivia. And you know, like, and you've got four rounds every episode. So, you know, well, five with the, with the time drop. So like by the end of it, you know, I don't remember what happened in, in a given day, never mind a week and never mind a month, um, and never mind a hundred episodes. So yeah, you're right. Like you, you, you go in, you dive in creatively, and then you kind of move on. You come out and you'd be like, wait, what just happened? That's right. <laughs> I love the way that it starts off with the simple questions first, because I, th I think that's, you know, that makes everybody feel great about winning in that moment. And then it gets a little bit tougher, which that to me is the learning process that your show offers. We learn as they go forward. Yeah, that's also a nice takeaway from the show is you're right. It kind of ramps up a little bit easier, a little bit slower. You want people to feel good after the first round. It doesn't always happen because, you know, as you've seen, the way it does is we give a general category and we give a team of three the option. Who wants to take on the category of sports? Yep. And the guy's like, oh, I'm the sports guy here. I got this one. And then they'll come and it'll be like, I don't know, you know, Olympic winter uh, sports categories and they're like oh my god i've never watched the winter excuse me we do winter olympics in my life and then you know then they've got to navigate it and so you you know you could get unlucky but one of the things that i do love about it is even if that guy's there never watched the winter olympics and that's the so that's the category that's the question and you know it's multiple choice you use the process of elimination you use your deductive reasoning and everybody can stay in it all the time like the contestants on the bridge and also just gameplay at home. Like as you're watching and playing along with your friends and your family, even if you don't know a category, you can use that process of elimination because of the multiple choice, you can stay in it. You can guess your way across. We've had many, 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 many people make it across the bridge. And they're like, they, they, they literally think that they're not going to get one question right because they don't know a category. Yeah. I love the fact that you give them three, you know, three little uh, wrong questions. But then inside my heart, I'm going, no, I'd like to see it with only two wrong questions because two is such an odd number. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, so in other words, they, uh, they, they get three strikes and then they're out. Yeah. They, two strikes and they still get to play. Um, yeah, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like it's so easy to get something wrong when you're under pressure. Like when you're playing at home, you may think like you would do better than you really would. Yeah. So I think that third that third strike is really important. You know, you get one strike. So for, for people that understand, every individual crossing, um, one of the team members is allowed two wrong answers. And then on that third wrong answer, your crossing is then over. And what you don't realize is that your other two team members, once you get those two wrong, they have the option to secretly bank however much money you've accumulated. And so even if you get the next question wrong, you actually get to keep that amount of money that they banked. Or if you actually don't get another one wrong and you continue to answer, you make it all the way across the bridge. And let's say you get all the questions right, because they banked your money, you only get the banked amount. But you've had that too wrong, so they weren't sure uh, it's, it's, it just adds a new element, a new dynamic that I think is really interesting for sure. Well, it's very original and maybe that's my attachment to it is that there, there is nothing on this show that I can compare it to anything else. Yeah. Well, we love that for sure. It makes, it's a very unique show. 
you know, you've got this huge interactive bridge. It's a character. It's got a voice. Yes. Uh, the surface of the bridge is the LCD screen, is the game board. So you got all these high, wide camera shots, and the contestants crossing the bridge are kind of the game pieces in this game, which is another unique aspect to it as well. Can you see the bridge actually? Because when you're watching it, we can, we can see what's going on on the bridge, the way that, you know, the categories come out and, and the steps and everything. Can you physically see that from where you're standing up there? Yeah, it's all upside down for me. Okay. So I can see it either on the bridge upside down or I have um, I have prompters in the distance. What, how did you even prepare for this? I mean, to go from daytime TV where you've got to, you know, be, be prim, proper, in action, and, and now you, you've got this great energy on a game show. Did you, what kind of coaching did you go through? You know, you get to know three different names a hundred times. So yeah. 300 different people, you know, their story, what they're into, how they know each other. You got to know new trivia every show. So you got five rounds every show and that's times a hundred. That's a ton of trivia. You got to know, you know, where the person is in the game, how much money they have in the bank, what round we're in. You got to keep it moving. You got to listen. You got to add in your own little personal anecdotes to it. Uh, it, it it's a, it's a unique set of skills. So, in order to prepare, the best thing that Game Show Network does is they give you a whole week of rehearsals in like a ballroom kind of vibe or, or in a boardroom, I guess. Yeah. And they, we, we map it out on the floor. We have like different contestants coming in. We play game after game after game. We time it. We see, you know, initially when we started actually, from because this is based on a UK show called Bridge of Lies, when we started mapping this out in the boardroom, we had way too much gameplay. We were never going to fit it all in in the time allowed so we had to trim it and tweak it so it's like and by doing that you just get more and more, and more and more comfortable and you get into the rhythm you get into the energy um and then when and then we had rehearsals on the stage itself and that's when you really lock in like the camera angles where you're looking where they're shooting there's a lot of there's a big big learning curve but i gotta tell you it's like a speeding train and you just gotta grab on and go Wow, I just I'm so amazed at the energy of this show in the way that I I always talk to my wife about it and saying it's almost like they're walking the plank because they they don't know what's up next. Yeah, exactly right. You're like you're taking these steps step by step yep. and you're but you've got that verbal answer but then you've also got the physical movement like you say you're taking a step onto this wrong answer and you're like waiting for it to turn red or green. Red if you're wrong, green if you're right, green you're moving on, red it's one strike against you. So it, it adds a definite element of uh, physicality and energy to it. The fact that you're not only verbally answering, but also physically moving through it. What is the one thing that you're learning from this? Because, I mean, I mean, you're in control of the energy of this show. Yeah, I guess what I'm learning is what I've learned. And, I, and I'm learning is that, um, I don't know, I feel like... I feel like people are amazed at what they can do. Like, I feel like people continue to surprise themselves. Like, I feel like when you tune in and you watch this show at home, you're going to be really surprised what you can do and as far as, like, how much trivia you know. And even if you don't know the trivia, you can use your deductive reasoning and process of elimination um, to be able to navigate your way across. And I feel like people have surprised themselves. I think, you know, in some cases, obviously, they've let themselves down. But if you don't know something, you don't know something. And if you, you're just guessing and, you you know, you've only got a 50-50 shot or a one-in-three shot or whatever it is. But I feel like, you know, I've learned that, um, you, you know, it's very easy to be amazed and uh, at what you're able to do and accomplish and know. And the other thing that I think that I've learned is that, um, well, I don't know, I you know, that just personally – that I had the energy and, and the and the focus to be able to do six of these shows yeah. every day for a month was uh, was a real it was a real marathon and I wasn't you know I wasn't sure how I would be with that and um, I feel like I did really well I was ready to shoot another hundred. <laughs> do you have a newfound respect for the the Bob Barkers of the world and would you have something to say to Ryan Seacrest who's now going to be hosting shows? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, Ryan doesn't need to hear anything from me, but he but I would say that. Um, I always knew it would be tough uh, as far as, you know, hosting these shows and knowing all the ins and outs of them all. I think a lot of the primetime shows, you know, shoot between three, four episodes a day. Um, but, you know, shooting six episodes is next level. So I, I would say 
you know, on Game Show Network, a lot of the shows that they shoot is six episodes a day. And I have an enormous amount of respect for that. This is the part that really grabs my attention in the fact that you're doing five shows a day. I've got to take transition walks. Do you at least get to go do something for a moment so you can regain composure? No. Well, no, no. Like it's it's six episodes a day. You walk out. So, you know, the end of episode one, you I walk backstage. I change a little bit of my wardrobe. I sit down. I get a new script. I have a producer there that helps me stay focused, goes through that script, learns the new contestants' names, learns where they're from, learns how they know each other. Like I learn how they know each other. I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm drinking some tea for my voice. Hmm. So I keep my voice strong. Uh, I relax. I stay as quiet as possible in between shows. And, um, we're, you know, we're only get about, I'd say less than 30 minutes in between each show, uh, to, to be able to change, read scripts, learn contestants, maybe go to the bathroom and then, and then go back out on set and start it again. Man, I'm so glad you brought up your voice because that's one of the things that, you know, we have to, you know, we have to preserve it and, and conserve a lot of energy and you have to learn how to properly breathe. Do you have a, a breathing coach at all? Because if you're not breathing right, you're going to, you're going to rupture that dang vocal cord. There's people that have been using breathing coaches on on, uh, on Game Show Network and other hosting uh, shows as well. They're really important. And as an actor, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't te- I don't really breathe that well. Um, you know, I haven't done a ton of theater, and I think in theater, show after show, night after night, you know, especially if you're singing, you really learn uh, your breath and you learn how to use your voice in such a powerful way. Um, I hadn't really done that as much and so i feel like by i don't know how far into this i can't remember how far into the run it was but i really got into being able to use my core and my diaphragm to breathe properly and it became a million times easier when you start breathing properly and using your um your core to to sort of project and once you do that you're you you know in a way you're you're barely you're barely straining your voice at all. Yeah, because in martial arts, the way that they train us to breathe is that if I'm breathing from my chest, I'm breathing wrong. It's got to come from, like you said, the diaphragm, or in martial arts, we call it the the dungeon. Yeah, there you go. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and again, I should definitely know that. I, whether you're on TV or you're on theater, like that's how you should be breathing as an actor, as a performer. Um, and I, I probably just got lazy with it. You know, like I probably didn't have to worry about it because your mic. And you can be real quiet and you don't have to worry about that as much. But, um, yeah, it's something that was a very, that, that's something that I definitely learned. You talk about the things that you learned in takeaway. I, I, you know, by the end of it, I was definitely learning how to use my voice in, in a really efficient and practical and, uh, and powerful way. I got to tell you, the one, the one thing that it was, would be scary for me if I was there with, with Beat the Bridge is I'm the numbskull that would, would want to go left and I go right. And, and it's like, because I just do stupid stuff like that. Yeah, well, I mean that happens, and you do pickups, and we would do um, we would do pickups, and we would do ways to like audio pickups or uh, or camera pickups. And, but you know, when you're doing that many episodes a day, you want to try to minimize those as much as possible. The thing that I, that tripped me up the most, for sure, the thing that tripped me up the most was uh, pronunciations. Yes, you know, odd city, odd city names. Yep odd last names um and and I, I had great producers prepping me on that and i still would get them wrong because in the moment you just get you just get tripped up you're moving it's just hard and so we would do a lot of those audio pickups see and that's every, that's every bit the reason why every, everybody is dude hey yo what's up you know because i mean like you you're struggling with you know with 100 episodes with all these uh, team names on it it's like oh my god how do you do that yeah yeah it's uh it's really it's really it, it, it was for me, um, something, and it also kind of, you get a little anxious about that. Like, I don't want to be the guy to pr- I mispronounce something that everybody knows how to pronounce. <laughs> you know, I would always be, I would always like blame Canada. I'd be like, well, in Canada, we pronounce it differently. But I mean, truthfully, like you just, it's, it's just so easy because you get a little numb brain wise and it's just easy to kind of like, you know, mispronounce something or see something backwards or, you know, uh, like I mentioned, my teleprompter was a long ways away. And so it, it's easy to get it, get it wrong. But I, you know, they tell me that I had a very, very, very little number of pickups. 
which um, surprised me because for me that sound felt like a lot, you know, coming from the world of daytime and, you know, you, you, you don't get a lot of second chances and stuff. So I was I was very lucky. Are there certain words that you try to stay away from? Because I, I saw an interview with Tom Brokaw. He says, I have to stay away from L words. He says, I can't pronounce an L word. And and, and that's one of it's oh, like, like like with me, it's like to determine. I mean, to me, it's like, a, you know, I, I trip over words like that. Yeah, I, I don't, I can't think of a certain category. I, you know, I can't think of that. It was, it was just, um, yeah, it would just sort of come and it just depended on the, whether it was somebody's last name or whether it yep, was a city yep, or whether yep. it was like a, yeah, it, it wasn't anything. I don't think like, a. uh, I'm surprised L words. I wonder what he's got against L well, words. He says he swallows his L. You know, like, oh, you know, it's, and, and so it's like, okay, I mean, that, you can get into a habit very easily if you swallow that L. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. But with your with your acting background, I, I swear to God, I see you as a director or a producer of one of these shows in the future. Whether you realize it or not, you're producing and kind of directing yourself all the time. Like, when, once you get experience of that, um, yeah, but I, you know, that that may be in my future. Uh, that may be in my future. I feel like I've, I've got a lot of irons in the fire now, and I'm 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 getting also into the um, health and fitness and longevity nice. realm. I'm becoming a, a functional health coach for people because I've I've been through a, a real health journey myself and learned a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm teaming up with a group of people that have helped me unbelievably. And we're um, so I've got I've got these different pods of my life, these different kind of categories, and. Uh, maybe, maybe someday I'll, I'll be able to uh, include directing or, 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 you know, producing a show like this. I love it. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, dude. I love your energy and I love your passion for what you're doing. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I like, I'd love, I'd enjoy talking to you anytime. So let's do it again. Well, you'd be brilliant. Okay. All right. You too.